Okay, let, let's get started. Um, today we, we come to one probably of my favorite topics, and then probably to one that is the uh, driest. Uh, actually, um, quite frankly, mathematical modeling a little bit, but don't worry, I, I don't go actually into mathematical models. I just highlight what we uh, kind of adapt in project management practice. So um, it's kind of curious case. Um, Planning is actually, if you look into our application uh, scenario, assumed to be covered already, which is of course often a misassumption. So I will rehearse it a little bit, very basic. Um, Eric Johansen uh, did actually his uh, master in philosophy uh, in, in planning procedures, and he uh, um, advocated that I should use his material. And I have to admit, uh, I was a little bit shocked. Uh, um, it, it was, yeah, he hasn't really, I think, uh, um, followed the newest developments in planning uh, um, theory, or maybe not so much looked at uh, other industries. So I have adapted it a little bit, and uh, I will lead you through it. But we start with uh, the, the topics that I do actually active uh, research in. It's project governance. And it's, a, it's an interesting topic to give you a little bit uh, um, an overview, um, governance is actually interpreted differently. I buy strongly into Ralph Müller's idea of uh, project governance. Um, I've given you a few reading suggestions here. You, you will find project governance pretty much in all books as well, uh, sometimes hidden, sometimes chapter-wise, um, but uh, there is a quite a vast area of um, interpretations around this. So uh, why, why is it so hard? It has been apparently recognized project governance being the crux um, of getting projects as well right and uh, not delivering the wrong thing. And here we are looking more at an external environment. Yeah? So we have a lot of projects that have left society, uh, if you listen to Alex's talks, in uh, societal di dilemmas. Uh, this is ca slightly controversial, the example, but it may be one. Uh, um, nuclear power yeah, in, in the 30s seemed to be the solution to our energy shortages. 20 years later, we are still uh, uh, driving around the nuclear waste from those power plants. Don't really know what to do with it, quite frankly. Yeah, so um, th those are some uh, implications of great project solutions that may not have uh, provided solutions that you can apply largely. Yeah, we, we are still trying to come up with solutions to some of the problems, quite frankly. Now, those are the big projects for the future generation, for you potentially. Yeah? Okay, um, so I, I hope really to arrive today with you um, that you understand what project governance means. And this degree, uh, um, to a degree, this disagrees actually with a lot of professional bodies. Yeah, if you look who has written the professional bodies, you will see that there's actually private interest from companies behind it, defining it in a different way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Camera your face. Oh, is it gone again? Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, it just was. It's pointing down. It's pointing down. You need to angle it up a little bit. The other one. No, not the screen camera. Yeah. Then, then I can't see it though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's scanned in too much. Somebody wanted to have a very close shot for me. For some reason, that play is bad. <laughs> okay, superb, thank you. Okay, this is better. Yeah, thank you. Okay, not, not too much missed, though, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, in the end, it's about the talk. It should be really an audio recording, but that's a different uh, story entirely. So, um, yeah, arrive at an understanding what project governance is and what the purpose is and uh, how we can actually implement it. Yeah, we will look at maturity models. And there are some companies that are really good at doing this, some that are not so good. Uh, this is often confidential. Yeah? So I, I, I won't name any particular companies except when they made outstanding uh, press because there are often confidentiality uh, agreements when you do research in that area. Yeah? And uh, what values does it bring and how do, do we actually uh, um, prove it? And in value, I really mean the benefits. Yeah? What can project governance actually bring to us as project managers and as well the organization? So um, governance itself, uh, this, this, is a, um, fr the, this is the most recent one yeah? from the Association for Project Management. Um, I, I was actually involved in uh, discussing governance yeah, because I research in that area. 
and uh, my, I have three sentences, contribution, this is amazing, yeah? I'm very proud of that. But actually before that there were a lot of professors, they have a bigger reputation than like chairmen that had a lot bigger voice than me and they, they came up with other definitions, so you, you, there, there's a compromise, yeah, quite frankly. So, uh, but they, they basically say governance refers to the set of policies, regulations, functions, processes, procedures and, very important, responsibilities that define the establishment, management and control of projects, programs and portfolios. Yeah, so it's written on page 8. They extend that. So to, to uh, understand this, general governance kind of comes from the outside world. Yeah, it's uh, the norms or, or maybe, ca maybe ethical conduct or um, corporate social responsibility requirements that kind of translate down to um, maybe our chief executive or if we're in a joint venture or we do a project with many organizations, it may be actually required from the client. Yeah? And then it uh, um, uh, translates kind of in a top-down manner down to our project level and needs iteration up again. Yeah? So we, we need as well to create a loop, and this is already the tricky bit, of transparency where we can actually say how we are governing, governing at project level. Is this what you understand uh, um, under your bigger visions yeah, at the executive level potentially? Yeah, and that, that, that is a big problem. Yeah, we will come to that in a second. But this is idealized how it should be probably, and uh, certainly the literature uh, emphasizes this. This is, again, the process that I showed you before. Don't, don't get hung up with it. The, this is just when you have three tiers. Yeah, so literally, you have the strategic level, you have the project portfolio management level, and it, uh, uh, at the um, delivery level, at project management level, this is how it can circle down and where you can integrate governance. Yeah? So, but again, this is like for study if you want to have a holistic uh, um, overview. So um, don't worry. Th this is literally what I've written. The, the important bit is in the bigger terms. Yeah? So they, they kind of say governance, this is project, program, and portfolio management. Yeah? So they define that implicitly as a control tool. So what you are doing, if you are the project manager, indirectly, you are the governor for the project. Yeah? So this is their interpretation. And uh, um, well, you can see what they bring it down to. So the, I, I was kind of heartbroken about that. Um, first of all, uh, they, they recognize basically that you should do it that way. Yeah? Uh, portfolio programs and projects are necessary to implement the governance and uh, we, we do so to justify actually to our stakeholders how we uh, spend the money. Yeah? So this is a very commercial view and uh, you will find them actually in different courts. They then extend it and said externally we have to pay a lot of attention if we actually have governance agreements in countries. Uh, so they, they name here, for example, interestingly, just two countries. There, there are a few more uh, in the world. So there's the UK, we have a, a corporate governance code by which we perform, so we have to comply to that. The other one that they actually specified, they liked it a lot because it's a little bit more loose, is uh, Savannah's uh, Oxley in, in the USA. Yeah, so it's another uh, governance code. I, I have to say that uh, I haven't seen much better in uh, France, Germany, and Sweden. I hope I have covered a, a few of your countries there. The, um, they have as well one, and they don't differ. They have been written by industry. Yeah, so it's normally a representative cluster that wrote this governance co uh, 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 code, and it often goes as far to say, in, in summary, uh, what, what we cannot predict or unforeseen circumstances, we cannot be held accountable. This is very bad governance. This means do crazy thing and you won't kept, be kept uh, responsible for it. Yeah, so um, there, there's a lot of criticism to be hidden there. Yeah, but uh, again, coming back, um, the aim of the professional bodies goes to optimization of investments. Yeah, and of course this is a business case, so you, you have to look at that. And then avoidance of common reasons for failure. So this is really good stuff. This is like uh, um, really what project governance can provide. And very important, it can be a huge motivation engine for your team, for your project, and bringing it as well to your, uh, well, to the client or, or your um, project board on the agenda that they are proud to be part of this project. Yeah, so it's as well a communication tool to actually motivate. Okay, um, two more slides. This is just illustration sake, so don't get carried away. Uh, uh, was, uh, actually, that is uh, a nice one. The application of good governance 
minimizes risk. So this is kind of the summary of those long uh, sentences. And it also assures the continued development of the profession. So in other words, you as a project manager are required to actually establish what good governance is and what isn't. Yeah? Professionalization is an institutional mechanism of you arriving at a professional, ethical, where we come to that later, behavior properly. Yeah? So uh, this is quite interesting. So if you are, want to be a, a professional, accredited, or uh, you want to be recognized in, in certain institutions, it means that you have to iterate this on yourself. Yeah? Um, good governance, well, they have a guide. This is a, don't worry, don't start reading even. This is the ACM. <coughs> yeah, they give you a very long list, and uh, uh, this was quite interesting. They, they actually uh, go in detail. This is application yeah, of reports and procedure where you have to look. Are you, are you starting to freeze there again? I, I can st uh, uh, put the heat on. I just noticed that everybody uh, puts the jackets on. Uh. Okay, we, we are aiming here at 27 degrees. Yeah, let's see where we arrive. Uh, a little bit tropical climate here. Quite all right. Good governance is a hot topic, yeah? So in a way, I can understand that you, that you get chilly about this, yeah? Okay, so th those are kind of uh, um, the uh, um, settings, how they actually summarize this. Yeah, so they, they have divided. There's project governance, yeah, to go back. This is in your company, yeah? So um, this is uh, if you do it company internal. And uh, you notice already uh, when it's a joint venture, which is just an excuse for saying like you, you have a supply chain, you work with inter-organizational uh, setting, yeah? So you, you come in as a project manager, but there are other companies. The, the list gets shorter, and, and now there's a very important one. This is always something where you can tell that business have written it. Nobody wants to read this. They don't really want to read that either. They have written, and, and this is, uh, really stands at the professional standard, which is uh, uh, amazing, good governance, but virtually all topics within the body of knowledge contribute towards good governance. However, uh, so f forget the former, the, the really important ones are, no, they, they don't say this, yeah, but uh, often it's uh, unfortunately interpreted this way. The key areas are P3M management. So again, they introduce kind of you as a governor and you are being the responsible person. Yeah? And here you can see they claim, okay, uh, uncertainty is bad. We, sh we, we should inform ourselves and get people involved that have worked on similar projects before. And then we, we should like, look at it as well in the life cycle, which is good. And there's a maturity. Yeah, so you can learn from past projects and improve your project governance. And not every we we'll come to that in a second. Not every company is ready to start actually a serious project governance yet. You know, there there is actually an implication with that. And then as well, there's an educational element for sponsorship and how that is carried, making them aware of uh, what's required, and then of course support functions. Yeah, so this is kind of the pragmatic uh, shortcut in the APM. So why, why, why did we try this in the first time? Why, why did we have project governance problem suddenly so much? Does anybody know? I'll give you dates. 2003 and 2008, stuff happened. And suddenly there was project governance before everybody neglected that. That, were like, that. that was a geeky subject in my research area. You know, you will find a few papers, but quite frankly, that was more personal researcher passion than anything else. Why is it so important since 2003 and uh, um, now became again so prominent in 2008. Because the, uh, the, the, global, the global economic crisis in 2008, like no one was really controlling, well, having the, taking control of uh, certain uh, like legislation, maybe. Yeah, so it, it was the right answer. Yeah, there were crises. <coughs> and uh, uh, what, what, was in, what, what was early 2000? What, what happened there? Anybody? It was already the company uh, that, that actually kind of caused it as well uh, in... No, it wasn't. I, I should be fair there. The, it, it was the Citibank fiasco. It started 2001. Then they kind of could cover it up because uh, it went actually to a court for a hearing. So in the meantime, uh, uh, speculation was actually uh, uh, not allowed. Uh, so there, there were a lot of issues around that. And then in 2003, what, what had happened? What had Citibank done? 
Nobody knows. Okay, wonderful homework. Well, what happened in 2008 then? Recession. Yeah, but what, what was the cause of the recession? I like it. We have a responsible person. So why the project manager? Not the project manager. It was the bankers, right? So I, I like that. So what, what had happened actually in the banks? What was the premises of the crisis? It was a financial crisis. Yeah, there was a shortage. Uh, actually, uh, it wasn't really a shortage. It was a liquidity issue. Yeah, well, that, that was quite interesting. But uh, um, what had what had happened? If you would, uh, you know, those are all uh, are probably quite specialist uh, uh, terminology. What had actually happened? Yeah. Yeah. The bank gets rewarded in interest for lending money. And they had brought that to a new dimension. They had basically given uh, uh, credits on such large scale that they were not even uh, assuming that they would get 80% uh, uh, of the payoff back. Yeah, they were just playing that as a game. And it was insured against uh, national currencies. Yeah, so um, in that case, it was the uh, Fed. Uh, Federal Reserve, yeah, that actually had the US dollar in there. And, and that was basically the grounding. So there were a lot of projects that probably wouldn't have got funding yeah. otherwise. Yeah? So this is quite interesting to see. And, and uh, somebody must have still applied for those credits. You know, they don't just give it to you. It doesn't come with a letter. Sometimes it does, actually. In the UK it does, to be fair. But uh, um, still, there was an element in between. So this is really where project governance became a lot of uh, uh, interest. So you will see all the project governance guides are from that time. Yeah, so uh, Germany and America, 2001, then uh, UK, 2003, then uh, France, they had their own thing in 2005. Yeah, they, they had actually a, a quite interesting story in Tahiti, which, which caused them to write their own governance guide. So if you're interested in that, fascinating story. Have, have a look into this. and. Uh, yeah, it, it was in combination Thailand, Tahiti, and then France. Yeah? So there, there was a tie that, that didn't really pan out. Uh, and uh, th this really caused the whole steer up about project government. So um, wh what is it actually? Why, why, um, why do most organizations don't really do it? Well, quite frankly, here's the rhetoric. And if you recognize that within your company, then you are not yet ready for project governance. Yeah, then, quite frankly, secure every project that you're doing and allow your superiors to look in and sign it off. Yeah, this is kind of your security mechanism. So um, I, I've heard that actually. Yeah? I don't care what the report says. I, I don't care you are going to deliver late with less, less functionality because that's not going to happen. You will be on time. It will work. Now stop wasting your time in my office and go and make it happen. Well, what is the issue here? If you would hear that as a project manager, what would be the issue? So what, what do we have here? No, no, but the, uh, it, it goes along your line. Yeah? So as a project manager, what kind of project do you have here? Are you confident? Is this a good project? No, you, you have assessed it and you think it will fail. It's not possible. Yeah? And now by just somebody telling you, make it happen, this is like, okay, fair enough. I will try. Yeah, so um, th this is really bad. And uh, this is actually from a real project. Uh, the, the project manager was ironically fired. Yeah? So this is quite a, a bad thing. So 12 months later, the project is uh, uh, canned after being 45 million over budget already. Total budget spent, yeah, and 45 on top. Uh, um, zero benefits. The implement uh, implementation partner was kicked out. The senior executive kept their job. No questions asked. This is really bad stuff. Yeah, don't, don't do projects like that, quite frankly. You know, this is my uh, assessment. But this is easier said than done. So uh, uh, most organizations don't do project governance very well. Uh, and uh, I have one more. Um, this project is pushed for time. The deadline is very tight. The team is a little smaller than ideal. So we are going to have to work efficiently and hard. But if we pull together, we can deliver this. 
what happened, it wasn't actually that drastic, but uh, I was personally a little bit hit by that because uh, it, there was a student of uh, ours actually involved. So the, the project delivers 35% late uh, compared with a, a baseline estimate, but this was not really the issue. That is a wonderful job. But what was the issue was uh, attrition rate of 25% of the team members. Yeah, one uh, was a little bit ill, had a uh, short... Uh, um, uh, uh, signs of um, stress and, and uh, couldn't concentrate very uh, um, well anymore yeah, and was really run down. So be aware of those momentums. Yeah? So um, if you have a project like that, we have cool selection methods. Think about the pro uh, portfolio, uh, portfolio management approach as a selection item. We, we have a look at uh, other, other elements that come in with project government. There, there are elements that can really be uh, harmful. Yeah? With this comes, uh, um, the, well, there are actually quite a few examples, and this is the actual report, uh, and 100 other examples. So uh, if you are interested in project failure, especially on lack of government, uh, then, then this is a um, report to study probably. Yeah? So um, business case doesn't add up, unidentified requirements was very loose, poor management around uh, stage boundaries, uh, so they, they just progressed, okay, we can do it, well, we don't really have a budget yet, but let, let's push on. Then technically unfeasible projects, a large uh, program in an organization doesn't know how to change. Yeah? So this was actually very bad because then you don't have the support mechanism. And doing too many projects, but start another one. Yeah. Yeah? So if you're already running on a, a, a maximum, then don't take another project on. Yeah? You, you will compromise all the other ones. And no much to organization uh, strategic direction. We have that already an in incapable delivery team. Yeah, so you have put a wonderful team together, but uh, it's not their competence area. They feel all out of their comfort uh, zone. Yeah, this is very dangerous. Then you have to give time for development. Yeah. And no coercion or the understanding of the benefits expected. This is another danger. Huge risk not mitigated or understood prior to uh, project kickoff. Yeah, so you, you have basically missed it. So just to summarize, um, there, there was as well a post report of eight causes of project failure. You can read it in your own time. The red ones relate directly to project governments. And the fourth one, arguably, in my mind as well, yeah? but this is uh, um, the government, the OCG uh, um, uh, Office of Government Commerce. So it's not OC it's OGC, that way around. And uh, um, they basically define it as such. I even think that number four, lack of skill and proven approach to project management and risk management uh, actually belongs to that because um, you, you quite frankly have the wrong team then if, if they can't really assess the, the risk of, uh, the, um, and don't have the skill for the given project. Yeah, then you have selected kind of wrongly into the recruitment of the project. Yeah, so um, quite frankly, uh, post reports indicate project governance is important. Yeah? There, there are a few examples that I actually named uh, um, that do the right uh, uh, thing. Who's Warren Buffett? Does anybody know? It's kind of popular. Alex really likes him for some reason. I, I don't think personally, but uh, uh, a lot of the courses and charities that he has set up uh, are quite noble. Who, who's that? Do we have guesses? A friend of yours, yeah? Nobody knows Warren Buffett? American investor? Yeah, spot on. He's an American investor and uh, uh, he is like, well, he's actually kind of uh, head of a few uh, um, major funds that basically manage in enormous amounts of money. So he makes a lot of investment as well into industries and uh, um, kind of looks after investment opportunities. And uh, he actually was involved in the American uh, um, governance setting. And, uh, um, well, I've taken it away. Yeah? Those that say they do it, don't. In, in the end, he actually uh, uh, moved away. And uh, um, the project governance, for example, in the governance uh, um, paper from America, defines the following. Um, the investors should invest in reasonable projects. Uh, I don't know what a reasonable project is, but uh, um, they, they haven't defined it very clear and left it very open. So although he had very good intentions and did the right talks, there was a lot of the right rhetoric, it was actually not uh, uh, manifested in the writings. Yeah, and uh, a few of his investments are as well uh, questionable. Uh, so he's still after the 
largest return on this investment. Yeah, if that harmonizes with uh, um, ethical correct investment, then that's, that's good, but um, there, there are certain compromises to be fought. Yeah? And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, this is another frightening thing. Those that do it, do it mostly wrong. Yeah, the, um, I, I'm, by the way, not the one that uh, imposes this. This comes uh, from, from thorough literature uh, review and, and what is possible. Yeah? So, um, for example, uh, when, when you read the quote, we are going to follow strict method uh, methodology uh, uh, here to actually um, do this. Um, then it's often we are going to do it my way. It's slightly cynical, so uh, uh, enjoy it as such. Then I'd like you uh, uh, buy in on this. Yeah, uh, this normally means I want someone else to blame when this thing bombs. Yeah, so if it doesn't work out, yeah, and we want you to be the executive champion on this project, I want to be able to blame you for the, my mistakes. Yeah, so this is as well an option. And then uh, last but not least, there are large issues at stake. I've made up my mind, so don't bother me with the facts. Uh, so this is uh, uh, often uh, a hidden cynic uh, comment to the project governance that we have at the moment. But of course we cannot actually uh, um, uh, rest on that. Uh, so this is in a way what you will hear. A lot of the uh, literature is very polemic because we do it very poorly in the industry. Yeah, so um, have a look at any paper or I've as well uploaded a few TED talks or, or um, uh, guest lectures from other people and you will see, uh, you, you won't get around uh, the recognition that they try to cut corners and, and uh, it's very tempting. Yeah? So there, there's a health warning. Um, often that is not really the project management's fault. Yeah? Often the companies don't use projects the right way. So projects are often driven by a certain setting that makes it very difficult for you to implement that. It's possible for you to implement it and to inform as well the senior management, but it's a tough process. Yeah? So this is worth recognizing. So, um, yeah, most organizations are not ready to accept proper project governance yet, and you, you have seen. Yeah? So, unfortunately, whenever they were involved, there came very pragmatic documents out where kind of the good things were dismissed in the last sentence. Yeah? So, this is uh, quite sad, actually. Okay, L let's have actually look what to govern means. Yeah? The, let, let's come a little bit to terms with what definitions are actually out there, because this is a very grim uh, uh, start so far. Yeah, so what, what is governance? Well, quite frankly, this is very bad. Uh, um, professionally, we have a lot of strange project governance schemes that all kind of claim to be the ultimate one. So we, we know this already from professional standards. Yeah, this, this is not good. So, uh, and they can't agree. This is another big issue. So we, we have to probably uh, uh, look quite pragmatic on what can we agree from that. Yeah, so uh, what, what I try to say here, if you are an IT project, you have your governance standard. If you are into uh, human resource management or merger and acquisition and you deal with people, you, you have your governance. Uh, um, and uh, if, if you look at uh, optimization or, or lean or something like that, you have yours. And if you're in the UK, then you have a specific one as well in the public sector. Yeah? So there, there are different codes of conduct that you will have to comply with. Yeah? But they disagree with each other. So this is a huge dilemma for us. Okay, so what, what is uh, a governance of project management, actually? Yeah, so clearly we have the organization, and this comes from the APM, but this is kind of what everybody can agree from. So you have the, um, a company that you're based in, and they have kind of the corporate governance scheme. Yeah, and then you have, of course, uh, um, the project that you're running, often trying to deliver benefits yeah, for the company, or uh, success to your stakeholders, um, which often sits together. So there is a direct overlap. And that is what we try to uh, define now as uh, governance of project management. And, oh, my arrows come too late. This is pretty bad. So uh, um, the, you, you have the project management activities, and they are directly uh, uh, influenced by the corporate governance activities. And the overlap of the two have, of course, um, uh, from the portfolio directions, so ignore the arrow there. I don't know why that is there already. Yeah, so it, it's actually a top-down approach where you get through the portfolio, the projects selected, that kind of sit within the corporate governance structure. Yeah, so uh, often enforced through the project sponsor, potentially. And then you have, of course, project management effectiveness that kind of has to address that. Yeah, so you measure it in your projects, that, that you are actually looking at the right thing, that you're knowing where governance issues could come from in your project. 
Yeah, and that is a top-down approach, and then it translates as well back. So this gets disclosed. Yeah, you know, as a project manager, what you have to look at. Where, where does actually my governance implications come in? What are we measuring here? Yeah, do we have to uh, monitor maybe our stakeholders yeah, and major projects? This is a uh, hot thing at the moment. Yeah, what, what does the public think about it? How do you measure that? Yeah, do you give actually media releases? What do you do about it? Yeah, so th this is an, a disclosure a strategy. And then, of course, you have to report back yeah, and say, like, look, what we disclosed at the beginning works well, or actually, we, we have to uh, uh, review this and iterate it. Yeah? So this is our idea, basically. Historically, uh, project <laughs> governance was really kind of uh, uh, focusing on uh, ordered rules. So it's a rule of conduct and a collection of action that you're planning to do. This was really then uh, advanced, if you want, into systems, rules, protocols, relationships. Relationship management was a huge thing that popped actually up uh, around the uh, 70s and, and uh, 80s. And uh, that, that provided really a, a framework for decision making and, and uh, actually having a benchmark. Yeah? And then uh, more recently, we, we have actually looked at, and this is uh, Ralf Müller's uh, um, plea uh, for, for transparent management. Yeah? Where, where you have like processes in place that you can use, where everybody in the team can see as well why decisions are made the way that you're doing them. Yeah? And, and that is a very tough one. Yeah. Before I just forgot, you know this transparent management. You just talk about this disclosure, mm -hmm. which is like, is that uh, actually communicates with transparent management or it's totally different? Thing? Sorry, you disclose at the beginning where you sit, uh, where you see the uh, um, indicators of project governance coming in. Yeah. So those may be norms or, or uh, um, as well processes, or, or you're measuring something, or you're protocoling uh, a certain decisions why you made those. Or you disclosure in that information from who? Oh yeah, sorry. No, th this uh, um, th yeah, this is yeah, <coughs> so the disclosure is yeah. actually um, often enforced uh, from the project sponsor side with your team. We not not stakeholders. This can be very dangerous because the stakeholders have no responsibility for your project. Yeah, this is important to get the perspectives, but they don't sign the document. Yeah, that, that is a different thing. Mm -hmm. So the you know the, yeah there, there would be issues otherwise with the disclosure. Yeah. But the reporting allows, of course, iteration. Uh, so it's important to report actually on the success of certain elements. Does that make sense? Uh, th that, was, uh, that was that one. Yeah. yeah? But this is, um, and if you don't have a project sponsor, then it's your uh, um, senior manager. And if it's just a small enterprise, <coughs> then it's the owner of the company. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So the, the role depends really on how you have structured that as well. Yeah? The origin of, of the governance idea, or especially the, the new uh, um, yeah, kind of governance interpretation that we unfortunately read in those long documents, is kind of summarized in Michel Foucault's uh, uh, philosophy. And he recognized that, that we have that drive. In the past, we, we had a uh, patronage uh, uh, concept. This is kind of, uh, it means a father figure that looked over us. Some governments are still run that way. Yeah, so you, you have a government that looks over you, they tell you when you do something wrong. Yeah, so this is a nice idea, but uh, uh, we, we have actually kind of moved away from that and uh, uh, liberated now the individuals. What does that mean? Um, the, libera uh, the liberation of the individual means that you yourself are responsible for what you do. Yeah, this means as well that you have to inform yourself what at the moment is a good conduct of governance. Yeah, so this gets really confusing. To your all-day uh, activities already, you, you have actually to find out as well what's expected from you in terms of governance. Yeah? So uh, I've actually underlined it. Uh, develop a strategy for creating a domain whereby individuals are responsible and engage in self-care. Yeah? So th you, you can do that with a team quite easily by facilitating a workshop and, and actually engaging with the uh, um, disclosures uh, uh, um, suggestion yeah, before you actually do the disclosure. And, and um, kind of look where do they actually, uh, where do those uh, governance rules impact on us? You know, what principles do we actually pledge to? So this is uh, other alternative of doing it. Yeah? So, um, and, and then you have the individual buy-in. 
Yeah, it's it's not okay to look them away. Then then you are basically accountable for this. Yeah. So um, with this origin, there's a clear implication. Yeah. So uh, I have to, I'm, I'm very sorry to disagree with a lot of the professional bodies. But uh, if they would have read the literature from the past 2,000 years, yeah, and this is not me reading it, this is people having done this for a long time and re uh, um, reinterpreting it for us again, then you will find that project governance is not project control. Yeah? So project control is a, a mechanism within a confines of planning and execution. We will have a look at that afterwards yeah, in the second half. But uh, it doesn't belong to project governance, although there, there is this implication in a lot of professional bodies. It's a wrong interpretation. Yeah? So uh, um, instead, the second one, this is really what governance is about. It's external environment. Yeah? You, you're looking externally to your organization, what is actually impacted. Yeah? And it provides a context in which the project is activated and realized to work on uh, uh, and or for projects. Yeah? So this is really important that you um, make this divide very clearly. Because project control is a different game. We come to that later, uh, and, and project steering as well. Um, there, there are processes that harmonize, yeah, but it's not the same thing. Okay, I just leave it at that point and I explain now what actually project governance is. Yeah? What do we want from the governance? And I think that is the easiest way of uh, approaching it. So if you look at project governance, uh, um, there, there is a very simple uh, uh, focus. Yeah, project governance is about stopping things going wrong. Yeah, so this is quite easy. De deliver the right benefits, avoid non-value-adding projects, and make sure the right big decisions are made. Yeah, so that decisions are not deferred. That's the rationale behind it is clear. Yeah? Well, by saying that stopping things uh, that are going wrong, isn't that a Well, the, uh, we, we come to that, yeah? So um, governance is certainly a feedback loop, and you have to control it, yeah? So control is not the same as project governance, but they have the, a lot of same interactions. Does that make sense? You know, so they are on a harmonized uh, uh, stream, uh, many elements, yeah? So I, I don't want to actually disregard that, but the, the governance often goes beyond the control. Does that make sense, yeah? Maybe that would be a good diagram to draw. That that may be actually quite interesting. Yeah, where where can we uh, do this? Yeah. Yeah. We work with the same point in the project control. Pardon? We work in the same point in the project control. Mm -hmm. That's mean no any difference between the project control and project. I hope you will understand afterwards the uh, uh, difference. Yeah, so, um, as I said, there are a lot of similarities in tools and techniques that we're using from project control. Yeah, to, to implement as well governance issues. Yeah? Because as a manager, we, we have a certain tool set that we can interact on. Yeah? So for example, we have a, uh, if, if we have a gate approach yeah, and, and we, we look at uh, uh, control issues with finance, then, then of course, you, you uh, um, internally review it and, and I hope you have then the control to plug the project if it's not achievable within the given budget. Yeah? But uh, um, it means as well at the governance mechanism, so if you're working, what, what is a nice uh, um, example? We, we had, uh, for example, here the uh, time tunnel project, and there was a huge uh, concern about the nature reservoir uh, around the time that, uh, uh, that the building of the tunnel would pollute the river and that a lot of the natural habitat would die away. So they, they brought actually in uh, um, uh, mechanisms with a university to monitor yeah, so it was additional control mechanisms, yeah? so you're, you're quite right, yeah? uh, um, that actually allowed you to feed back on that, to measure, yeah? and, and uh, if you want, have, have a tool that allows you control. Yeah? But it doesn't belong to the normal tool center, does that make sense? Yeah, so it's a, a external additional tools. Yeah? So th this is what I mean by that. I, I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, yeah. So... Um, yeah, the, the notion here really is, is if projects matter, project governance matters. And uh, uh, governing itself, uh, it's, it's very simple. Yeah? Uh, uh, governance is normally broken down in, in rules uh, um, that can be self-imposed. Yeah? They can come from your team uh, or from your key project. And I, I use the word stakeholder here a little bit with care. Now, this is often really the, the core team, if you want, yeah? or, or core stakeholders. This may be 
your client, maybe not your client, maybe it's just your project sponsor. So keep it kind of small at that level. And then you, when, when it comes to actually capturing potentially is, potential issues, that is when you do the outreach to the stakeholders to get the information. Yeah, but uh, when you actually define the governance, you do that within the confines of your project. I hope that makes sense. Yeah? You, you will see that there are otherwise uh, huge issues with that. You, you have as well uh, government-imposed uh, um, governance mechanisms. Uh, so those are environmental um, uh, uh, policies, potentially, or, or um, uh, guides of conduct, or something like that. And then you have as well professional guidelines yeah, that, that actually impose certain elements of governance, for example. Yeah? Um, and this is really, um, when I said self-imposed versus official ones or formal ones, this is really what I mean by formal and in informal. And uh, we, we can normally measure that, um, the, the informal, with um, uh, indicators. Yeah? You can actually quantify this by uh, opinion pools or, or actually media uh, um, uh, um, yeah, surveys and uh, related things. Yeah? Normally we measure that in behavior and ethics that we are subscribing uh, to and potentially policies or, or rules of engagement. Yeah? The roles of governance are actually kind of set in long-term view and uh, um, encouraged when you evaluate them to be negative, not positive. Yeah? You, you assume the worst outcome. That is literally the scenario that you are building for. Yeah? And if you don't need it, this is good. Yeah? Then you're on the safe side, in other words. Yeah? And then work out which 30% of what you are doing is uh, uh, wrong, of course, uh, this is an uh, old uh, uh, chestnut. Yeah, so assume that uh, um, what you have planned with a lot of detail focus, 30% will be wrong or not required. So go with that uh, perspective in and reflect on that. And not just yourself, ask others, how would you do it different? Is it better? Yeah, but th this takes time, of course. So where does the governance come from, actually? It, it's actually rooted in, in our organizational aims and or, or mission of the business yeah, and the business plan. This is often how it translates down. This is why I was saying as well, sometimes uh, your organization isn't yet fully ready for it. Yeah? So as a project manager, you can plea for this, but maybe your company has no interest at the moment for, uh, in this. Yeah? Then it's of course on you to create this awareness of it and hopefully uh, get them passionate for it because shareholders actually kind of uh, uh, request it as well nowadays quite often, or as well company owners, yeah, because they don't want to be seen as doing bad governance. Yeah. Then you have, of course, the corporate governance, as explained, and then uh, direction, administration, and control of companies feeds directly into it too, yeah, so there may be uh, certain elements, and then the processes, customs, policies, laws affecting these uh, is another one. Yeah, so it's, it's quite a, a dry game, when it comes to the governance board, um, we, we have a little bit, uh, uh, I have actually experienced myself huge issues with this. Um, we, first of all, keep it small because um, there, there is a certain issue. If, if it's not senior enough that they don't actually can make the decision, then it's kind of a phrase, yeah? So you need as well the decision-making power, actually. And uh, keep it small, that, that is quite frankly, the, the more people you involve, um, that maybe come from different perspectives. So if you have a big board, they normally don't do that as a main job. That would be a very expensive, luxurious thing to do. Yeah, but maybe maybe you have something like that. Yeah, but then there should be solely uh, uh, in it. Often what happens is you have big boards from all kinds of trades, and they all have their opinion in it too. And that creates huge dilemmas. Yeah? For example, in my research area, we, we have here the situation at Northumbria. It's now over three years ago. Uh, uh, they, they will be probably bullied for that uh, example anyway. So I had students that were really interested in major projects. Uh, we, we had uh, uh, two uh, um, students that wanted to work, they, they came both from a government uh, uh, funded scheme and they wanted to develop the Formula One course in their country, which was very controversial, but it was about uh, um, creating international attention and it was about stakeholder engagement. So when it came actually to the, so we worked together of course with the diplomats, this is important, there was major projects like that. You, are, you, you put money into a country that is uh, larger than their annual turnover. Uh, so this is a, a huge thing potentially. So we, we went to the ethical committee and asked the diplomats for advice. Yeah? They, they do this, this is their job. 
And they gave us very good uh, um, uh, advice, but then it came to our faculty ethical meeting and one member thought that uh, um, the students put themselves into a very vulnerable position. Yeah, so if the political regime, for example, changes and thinks that this project is not a good idea, then the students will be held accountable for that. Yeah, I have had now um, had quite a few students that have done studies like that. I never had that plea. And that was really just a personal opinion. Yeah, we have backed it up with diplomatic uh, support letters and everything. And we, we had a huge fiasco. Um, it wasn't really huge. Uh, it went through, yeah, but uh, on, on like um, basically questioning the, the judgment of the committee. And then our university was on with it. Why do I tell you the story? Well, the dissertation was delayed nine months. If you're doing an MSc in one year or one and a half years, that is a very long time, a very painful time, yeah? where, where you can't do your project. So this is just bad. So uh, quite frankly, uh, um, we, we have now better procedures, I hope, yeah? and we have made it more transparent. So um, yeah, be, be careful uh, that you don't uh, have all the project stakeholders in there uh, either. Yeah? So of course, um, if it's your team or somebody like that, then it's useful. and assess the information, yeah, this is important from the stakeholders, but having them on the committee, this is just potentially polarizing the committee and like uh, probably bringing it out of proportion of your uh, remit actually, yeah. Okay, implementation, well, it's, it's quite simple. The, the key groups can be broken down, board of uh, uh, directors, strategic value of projects, um, this can be in policy formation. I, I prefer actually not doing that, more having like a um, principle or, or a um, guideline that you can sign up. Policy is always quite an enforcing and questionable on uh, um, uh, the premises. But uh, it's literally uh, uh, lining out who to be involved and what resources they actually have. Yeah? Are they independent with the project? Can they make their decision at the project level? Do you allow that? When is the feedback mechanism? Yeah? How, how have you built that up? Then you have the project sponsor role, a crucial role. Yeah, this is actually uh, highlighted in a few literature uh, um, settings. In parallel, um, you can probably look at senior management in organizations, yeah? networking abilities, confident, uh, uh, charisma, objective. Yeah? Those are kind of um, traits that you hope to have at that level. Yeah? Or, or that uh, hopefully your uh, um, support uh, 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 your project sponsors have. Yeah? Then of course a steering group. Uh, this is maybe a, a principal institution, authority, uh, linkage of role, governance infrastructure and framework. Yeah, so here you are relating back to your regional or national framework that you're actually connected to. Yeah, and then last but not least, stakeholders, all those who have a stake in it, uh, in the project, uh, something to gain or lose through actions of the project. Uh, narrow staff suppliers, wider communities, industries. Those are the guys that you need for the information to make an informed decision. Does that make sense? Yeah. So th this is it. If if you have that, then you are half there. <laughs> then you just need to uh, consider as well how you make the decisions. And and uh, um, uh, it's very simple. It just stick with the first one. Remember your objectives. Then then you have already won. Yeah. If you actually have that kind of process then you don't have to worry too much about it. You still have to basically implement it on the project level, but then you get already from director level kind of good governance framework. Yeah, so this is the half, uh, um, that is already your half there. So, um, and, and the questions that you can then check is, is the project benefit still worthwhile to achieve? Are we going to achieve it? Do we have confidence? If not, what are we going to do about it? How does this project compare to our lessons learned? What's the plan B? Yeah, what are we doing about the key risk? And this is, of course, something that you review whenever you have a gate stage in your project life cycle. Yeah? So this is a continuous process. And you, you have to set it according to your project, of course. Yeah? So there's a dependency as well. Underlining all of this is, of course, honesty. Yeah? So uh, publish the decisions made and, and reasons why. This is, this is elite. Yeah? There, there are few that do that. Uh, um, that actually, uh, I had we potentially uh, a few of you are working in a company like that. In, in Sweden, there, there is actually a good code of conduct that a cluster of companies in Gothenburg have signed up to. They are doing this. To work for a company like that 
is wonderful because you get as well directed feedback. If one of the uh, um, decisions made is not so good, you often get a memo. You get like a small note, did you consider this and this? And then you may have and then dismissed it, uh, then it's okay. But if you haven't considered it, then you know and you can change it. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a learning mechanism as well then. Yeah? And of course, uh, open these up to scrutiny. This is implicit what I just described. Uh, publish the data that informs the decisions. Yeah? So on what decisions is it made? This doesn't mean you, you have to write it all down. This means you refer to the documents or, or the questionnaire that you did with your stakeholders, for example. Yeah? So this is the idea. And then, then it's grounded. Yeah? So in a way, you, you made really good informed uh, decisions. Um, if, if you're interested in this, uh, because I'm, I'm quite interested in this myself, I've given you a different concept so you can do it as a dissertation topic too. Yeah? So I've uh, given you different governance schemes by uh, project type, then level of analysis, what they focus on, who are the key authors, and so forth. Yeah? So wor worth researching. I strongly suggest that. Uh, and, and then last but not least, um, if you uh, look at implementation, there is actually kind of a maturity model, and that is actually pretty cool what uh, Müller and Stavicki have uh, um, uh, 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 developed. It's, it's really the notion of where educational principles come in, yeah? coaching potentially, or going in the companies, and uh, um, what uh, uh, management uh, demands externally. Yeah? So, um, and then last but not least, economic pressures play often a very great uh, uh, role in this too. Yeah? So and then you see uh, at stage uh, step one is uh, what can be done, methodology use and basic training that everybody is familiar with it. Then what should be done at management level? That is a steering committee. Yeah, familiarizing with different cases. What is done? Economic pressure, audits and reviews. Yeah, so this is when you kind of have a quality loop in it. Yeah, and you get feedback. Second is certification. Yeah, so if if you want to go with any of those integrating this in a project management office as management uh, level, yeah, and then a uh, mentors program maybe, where when there are different economic pressures. And last but not least, advanced training and internal certification potentially, benchmarking, and then creating a maturity model that works for your company. Yeah? That, that is a very good uh, way of doing this, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of this. Yeah, how, how you certify, this is of course a, a critical question, but uh, um, worthwhile looking at. So in summary, it's very simple. Define objectives of uh, governance. Uh, set one or two things to focus on yeah, to get started. Define the governance team. Keep it small. Keep it senior. Yeah, that they can make the decision. Yeah. So if, if you it's just to, to keep that in mind, yeah, they are the people that have to have the authority to say, this is a bad project. You shouldn't be doing it. We, we stop this here. You, you get a different project. This is what you want as a project manager. You don't want the director that says, like, Ah, don't bother me with those problems. Get on with it. Yeah, this is kind of bad governance. Yeah, so uh, you you can really make it that simple if you want, and have a list of questions. Yeah, you use uh, those questions if you want. They come from literature, or, or define your own questions. Yeah, and then publish the decisions and the data to support them. So evidence-based decision making. This is super. Yeah, and then measure the value delivered. Very important. Yeah. Well, what do you get actually additionally from doing project governance? Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, I think I leave it with that for, for now and we make a 10 minutes break. Do, do you have any questions at this point? Okay, 10 minutes break. <laughs>